So thank you so much for joining me today. This is my second lunch with Kadena. I used to do this like 10 years ago and then I stopped. <laughs> Don't ask me why, but I did. And now I'm free. So I feel like um, ever since I turned 57, I kind of feel like there are some things that we need to talk about that people don't normally talk about as it relates to running your business and what's really required. And one of the biggest aha moments that I had, even though I said authenticity has no competition like 20 years ago, I didn't honor that for myself. I honored it for my clients, but I didn't give myself that permission. What I would do is literally spin myself into this fit of perfectionism and people pleasing and proving. And now this is what I love about being older. It's like, uh, that's a no, like no is my favorite word. And so what I want you to do is I want you to know there's three simple but powerful ways that you can really differentiate yourself from other people. Cause the truth is there's no competition whatsoever. And so the first way is the way in which you provide value. Okay, I think a lot of times people don't realize like they offer free consultation calls, you know, but they do them one on one. But when you do them one on one, that's a great way to get to know your people and get to hear their language specifically, because the way that you think a problem is and the way they communicate what the problem is are oftentimes two totally different things. So I really want you to begin to think about how can you create conversations around questions so that you can pull out of people what you really need to um, hear in order to support them. Another thing I think <clears throat> that's really, really important is we need to start to provide helpful resources. Now you're gonna hear a lot of people say, um, don't toot your own horn, show everybody else's stuff instead of your own. I used to do that for a really, really long time. And you know what I found that it did was it, sp it spun me into self-doubt about my own value. I think if you create a, a, a graphic, right, that helps a person comprehend a specific point, that's your intellectual property. That's your wisdom being displayed on the page. You can share other people, but you can also put yourself forward. Do you follow what I'm saying? Because we're kind of socialized to put ourselves on the back burner. And then what we don't talk about, especially if you've been heavily churched, like I have been, there's this feeling of anger and resentment because everybody goes before you. And it's like, well, where's, do, do my, does my life matter? Do my words matter? Does my presence matter? And so to spin you out of that, I'm gonna encourage you, like give yourself permission to be creative and messy. And what I mean by that is like, I'll show you something. So I don't know why I didn't pull it close to me, but like I created this workbook 20 years ago. The only people who've ever seen this are the people in my coaching program. And I would always apologize to them because it wasn't perfect. And then when I think I turned 55, like two years ago, a graphic designer said to me, who's your graphic designer? They designed such beautiful graphics. And I was like, me? And she said, what? I was like, mm -hmm. she said, I never see anybody's graphics like yours. And that helped me to see why I started asking clients, like, why did you hire me? And they were like, because you give me permission to be me. So I think when we give ourselves permission to be ourselves, we give our clients permission to be themselves. That's a way of providing value that nobody else has, right? I also think it's about providing a different perspective. This is all under providing value, okay? It's also about you providing a different perspective. So it's not about arguing with people, but it's kind of like when we were on Clubhouse and I asked the question, what problem do you solve? You know, and, and people kind of paused and hesitated and they wanted to talk about themselves. Customer doesn't care about you, right? The customer cares. Are you listening to me? Do you see me? Do you hear me? Uh, it kind of goes back to the earlier point that I made. Does my life matter? Do I matter? Or is it all about you? So I think we got to like get away from being scared to say, you know, have you considered this? Or have you considered doing this a different way? Or have you considered this different approach? And kind of, it's not that you're challenging people, you know what I'm saying, just to be challenging people, but you're challenging people in a respectful way, but letting them know you can't keep doing what you're doing and expecting a different result. Because that just like does not happen, right? 
And then I also think that um, one of the things that we really, really struggle with a lot of people is accountability. I'm prior military. Plus, not only am I, I was active duty Air Force, but I also grew up as military dependent. My father was in the Marines for four years, and then he was in the Air Force for 28 years. So I grew up under heavy levels of accountability and responsibility. And I think we need to start holding our clients accountable instead of us as women, you know, um, putting the entire burden on our back. And then now we end up like carrying people, dragging people, pushing people, pu <laughs> pulling people over imaginary finish lines. That's not cool. So I feel like the, the greatest way for you to provide value is to ask a person, hey, what's your goal? And by when are you going to achieve that goal? How can I support you? Not how can I do it for you, right? Because you got to do your own work, but how can I support you? And by support, that doesn't mean that I become your emotional uh, dumpster, right? That doesn't mean that I become like the, you know, the concierge who's doing everything for you. It doesn't mean that. But what it does mean is providing that level of accountability and creating sacred space for them so that they can flourish and they can be vulnerable and say, you know, I don't know how to do that. I, um, I don't know what I should be doing. I don't, you know, I, I just don't know. And you being clear enough to say, you know what, I don't know everything either. Nobody does. But if you did know, and if you trusted yourself, what action would you take? And by when are you going to take that action? Right. And what's the cost of not taking that action? You know, and then um, the final thing I think is we need to start following up with people because a value is provided. Like I send handwritten thank you cards. You know, I call people to check up on them to see how they're doing. You know, I, I do a lot of things that to me, it's just part of a relationship. I think all of that is providing value. And there's so few people who do it. You know, like when I mail my clients a box when they first hire me, people are like shocked. They're like, nobody mails anything anymore. But it makes people feel special, especially if they're spending a tremendous, tremendous amount of money with you. The second way, well, before I go to that, do you guys have any questions about that? Or do you have, what questions do you have around how you're providing value? How can I support you? No questions? You gotta unmute. Okay, cool. All right. So the second way is to be authentic. Now, you may have heard me say on Clubhouse, I love Dave Chappelle. <laughs> like I love, love Dave Chappelle. And Dave Chappelle, by watching him on TV, gave me permission to be me. Like I remember he did this sketch and he had um, some white chalk on his lips or white lipstick, whatever you want to call it. And he was in a classroom and he was singing nursery rhymes. And we all know he is not a singer, right? And it was so horrible, but I laughed till tears ran down my face. And I was like, I'm gonna give myself permission to be publicly vulnerable in that playful childlike way. Because I just told you, I grew up in a very regimented military type of household. So I can be serious like all the time. So I think the three parts of being authentic are to be transparent, right? And to be vulnerable. And I'm sorry, my eyes are itching really bad, please excuse me. And to, um, and I'm trying not to rub them, but, and to really like render a level of service that's rooted in where shoulder to shoulder staying as leaders, not teacher student. Do you know what I'm saying? Not priest uh, and layman. It's not this, it's a relationship like this, not a relationship like this or this. Just getting really, really honest about the fact that we're one tied to another here to be of loving support to each other. And we can't do that if we're wearing masks and we're pretending to be somebody that we're not. And then the third thing I feel <laughs> it is something that's like a sticky point for people because especially if you've been heavily churched, you find people say, um, they'll say stuff like, well, I don't really need to do that because I can just pray about it. But the third way is to engage in both personal and professional development. One of the things that I have found, and I, I saw this years ago, I was at a friend's house and um, Janet Jackson came on television. And this is like when I think she was, I, I think this was in the control video or whatever. 
And my girlfriend was complaining about how she can't even sing and she's so famous or whatever. And I said, ooh, jealousy has reared its ugly head. Now the person that I was talking to sings a cappella and could sing anybody under the table. And I turned to her and I said to her, I said, you know what I find fascinating? You're tearing her down because she's doing publicly what you're afraid to do. So you go to church and sing your heart out, right? Which most people do. And then they come bitterly talk about the people who come on TV and they're using whatever editing stuff like to make their voices sound better. There are people right now who can outsing any person that's a current musician celebrity, but they're too afraid to bring their gift forward. I think sometimes we get so stuck in a rut that we don't realize that our comfort zone is actually a place of great discomfort because it keeps us stuck in tolerations. You know what I mean? Like you're tolerating under earning, you're tolerating over giving. You're just like doing all the things instead of sitting down and looking at from a professional perspective, how can I make my work easier for not just for the client, but for me? Why do I have a workbook? Because I got sick and tired of people asking me the same question over and over again. I'm not talking about different people. I'm talking about the same person. Do you know what I'm saying? Like here we are grown people, you ask me a question. And then every time I see you, you ask me the same question. I'm like, did you write that down? And then they don't write it down. And then they're offended when you say, did you write that down? And it's like, okay, this is what we're gonna do. Kadena is gonna create a workbook, okay? So now I have a workbook. And when you ask me these crazy questions, I can say, go to page such and such and look at your own notes. Cause there's a level of accountability now where I feel like, and I don't know any other way to say this, but we as black women are expected to be all the things, the maid, the chef, the home, uh, what, what do you call it? The concierge, the, um, the gardener, the landscaper, the decorator, you're like all the things, right? And I'm like, stop, I'm one woman, you know? So I had to give myself permission to say, you know what? Part of my personal development was learning how to set some healthy boundaries, right? So to put some systems into my business that created more ease for me. Part of my personal development was taking art, like um, drawing classes, where I le learn how to draw, which is not my anointing, right? Because girl, I still can't draw, but I at least can use a ruler to draw a stick man straight, right? So it's like lightning, like letting, um, how do you say this? Uh, letting go of the need to be something that you're not. And I think that professional development, I, I see a lot of people say crazy stuff like, well, the Lord gave me the gift of speaking, so I'm just gonna speak. And I'm like, but do you speak with clarity, brevity, and authority? Or are you rambling? Because, you know, like when we're on Clubhouse, sometimes when people are talking, I'm like, oh, thank God they can't hear me. I mean, they can't see me because I'm like, oh, are you kidding me right now? Like, I don't want to hear about that. Like, you're talking about stuff that's all around the mulberry bush and y'all are like running down yonder. And then I've lost the whole point of where are we in this conversation, right? So I feel like it's just, we don't tell each other the truth. And I'm just at that point in my life where I feel like, the greatest investment that you can make is in your own growth and expansion and development. Because I, I would just tell you straight, I wouldn't be where I was today without a coach because I thought, I'm a smart girl, I can figure it out. You see these books behind me, I was reading these books. And you know what's like really embarrassing? It took me maybe, I'm, I'm gonna say to you 20, maybe 25 years, maybe 25 years to realize that you're not just supposed to read the book, you're supposed to apply what you read. That sounds so dumb, <laughs> right? But that's what I thought. I don't know if I thought, because I know what to do that's doing it. I don't know, I was tripping. And so I realized I'm a smart girl. It can't just be me. Do you know what I'm saying? Who's thinking like this, but it kind of goes to, I'm gonna tell you a story that has nothing to do with this so you can see what I'm saying. I wanted to be a homeowner for a really, really long time. And when I was 33, so from, I went into the military at 18, right? Got out when I was 22. <laughs> Tried to become a homeowner and they wanted like 30% down payment. And you know, when you're 22, you're like, where am I gonna get $15,000, right? So now I'm 33 and I'm complaining to this woman about how I can't be a homeowner. And she bust out with, did you fill out the loan application? 
Because I said I prayed about it. I said, I've been praying about this. I've been looking at houses. And she said, did you fill out the loan application? And I was like, uh, no, let me get myself together, right? And so I filled out the loan application and voila, I'm approved. And now, you know, I was a homeowner, right? But it was just like, that was like, I think like my big, I thought I had an epiphany and woke up to it. But then fast forward, and I think I'm 45 and I'm talking to somebody and I'm telling them an action to take in a book. And I said, I didn't even take that action. I was like, let me not be a hypocrite. Let me take the same action I just told you, like heal thyself. So I, I just think that we've got to get, we've got to get really clear, you know, about like, what is it that we're wanting? And I also think I'm going to add another one in here, even though I said three, something just popped in my head. I think the fourth thing is how you run your business just in general, because so I worked for an airline for 20 years and let's keep it 100 here. A 747 airplane is a 747 airplane, right? The only difference is the experience on each aircraft. That's the differentiation, right? So what makes somebody fly on Emirates versus British Airways versus Virgin? Do you know, it's the service. So I feel like this is something that's like really needed, especially in this land of online where people I think have, they're like little keyboard ninjas and they're gangsters, you know, online. Then you meet them in real life and they're all timid, you know, and, and very meek and mild. But online, it's like a whole nother level of ridiculousness. So I feel like this, the service really stands out because when I meet people in real life and I give them a gift bag, like when I have events, they're like, God, this gift bag is so rich. And I'm like, well, let's take a step back. I had to charge enough money to be able to pay for the items in the gift bag, you know? But I realized that that's kind of like going back to our roles as a woman. To me, an event is like your own personal dinner party or lunch party, right? So if you treat it like that, I, my attitude is, my events are little baby weddings. So I like, you know how um, Godiva has those little bitty chocolates and um, you know how like when people get married, they have the um, those little, I forgot what they're called, but it's like those long cylindrical things and they'll put Skittles or M&Ms or mints in them, like that type of stuff. Go to a party store and you're gonna see all this stuff. You literally can sit down. If you're, if you're doing an event like a 12 people, and you have a little gift bag and it's, it looks like the little party favor bag from a wedding, but then you add something like this in it. You get a sponsor and you add, let me turn this light off. You add, turn this light off, look at all this. Okay, hello, I'm going this way. You add something like this, right? That changes the game. Do you know what I'm saying? So you get a sponsor to offset the cost so that then you can say, and this is courtesy uh, sponsored by so-and-so, right? In my particular case, Guitar Center, right? So you say the name of the sponsor and now you have, what, a hundred dollar gift and people are like, wow, that's a differentiator. So that's kind of sort of what I mean. So that's all I got. And I, I know I said that kind of fast, but I, uh, one thing that I did want to do, because I don't want to be rambling on calls for hours at a time talking about a whole bunch of stuff. So let me know, what are your thoughts? What action? So from what I just shared, like what's one thing that you can do, you know, like this week or, or at least put it into your plan to implement this week? Because that's one of the reasons I wanted to do this call. I wanted people to have something tangible, not just, I'm not talking from a theoretical place. I want you to know doing these things or even one of these things will change your business. So what appeals to you or what are your thoughts? Uh, I can go first. Um, so I'm going to shoot an email to my prior clients. So I used to do um, check-ins, like okay. check-ins, just shoot them a quick email, remind them that there's office hours and I'm available, um, you know, just as a, as a, a courtesy and to, to check in on them and to get an update. Um, but because I've, I'm in the process of um, getting clarity on what my new business model is going to look like. So moving from a service provider 
doing business operations and business compliance, okay. moving that into um, either coaching, VIP day one-on-ones. I'm not sure yet. You know, I'm just kind of waiting for it to- you, know you can kind of play? No, let me tell you something. Yeah. <laughs> That's a brilliant idea, but this is what I would do. You said boxer, right? So why not record an audio and say, hey, I got an idea, something I'm thinking about creating, you know, um, I'm going to do a quick survey. Would you prefer a group coaching program or a VIP day? Which one sounds good to you? So you basically say, this is the problem I noticed that people are having. My solution is either going to be a VIP day or a group coaching program. You know, as a result of being in this particular program, you're going to express, experience, achieve, accomplish, whatever. Which one do you prefer? So it's kind of like a check-in and it's a question so that you're not creating something that nobody wants, right? And I, this is my thing. I'm so glad that you're transparent about you're not sure which way to go. What I used to do was, which still trips me out that I did this because I don't know, I was waiting for some divine inspiration. This is girl, <laughs> like, I don't know what I, I don't know if I thought I was gonna hear a voice or I was gonna be driving down the freeway and see a sign. I don't know, I was tripping, okay? so. I, that's why I'm saying to you, like, make either an audio or a video or just write the email out. But here's the thing that you do that people don't tell you to do. You never build anything first. You create the sales page first. And then what you do is you use the sales page to test it. Now, that freaks us out as Black people because we're taught you got to be 10, 20, 30, 100 times better, smarter, faster than white people. So we're scared to do that because we don't want to be seen like with their pants down. But the reality of it is that's what slows your money down because now what you're doing is you're perfecting this idea that you don't even know that people are willing to pay for. So my recommendation is like, you know, literally iterate your way forward. Do you know what I'm saying? Demo test it, send out a video or whatever and say, or create just a little video sales page. You know, it's like, hey, boo, hey, let me tell you, I got this thing. This is, this is a problem. I'm noticing people are having this problem. Make sure you tell them. I'm noticing people are having this problem. So I created this solution. And as a result, the transformational benefit to you would be that you're going to achieve, accomplish, feel, know, do whatever differently. Do you see what I'm saying? And then let people say, I want that. And then once they say, I want that, don't just start creating. What specifically do you want? Because sometimes when you're in overachiever mode, they said a group coaching cook program you know what I'm saying? And you didn't create it like a $20,000, $30,000 mastermind experience. You know, so, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because you know what I'm before. saying? Wait a minute. Yes, <laughs> that's what I'm talking about. Because I have done that. So like stop and create another survey, right? And what do you want in this? Like what? Are, ask more questions so that, because oh, this is what I can tell you. Kadena has created college courses for kindergartners because I thought that when they said yes, <laughs> I thought they were at the college level and I just went to work and then they were like, I don't even know what this means. And I'm like, but this is what you asked for. No, it's not. Like we, we got to simplify, you know, does that, does yeah. that support you? Oh, it, it definitely does. Thank you. And where sure. can I, cause I didn't, wasn't taking notes. I started taking notes, but then sure, I'll like, email I'm you. No, no. To <laughs> Please, thank you. you I got to review it. <laughs> but do me a favor. Do me a favor, and put your emails in the chat so that way I don't have to dig for them. Okay, and um, do put your emails in the chat for me, and then I know we have like three minutes. So yeah, I'll email them out. And here's the good news: is um, I just feel like this is our time. Right. But it's not our time if we're not willing to let the creative process be messy. Right. So we, you can't go into this like spinning on your perfectionist wheels. You literally got to take that off and just say, you know what, I'm an artist, you know, I'm a business artist and I'm experimenting with what's going to work versus what's not going to work, because you can make more money right now than in any other time in history, simply because people's attitudes are changing and they're realizing I haven't heard a diverse voice, right? I'm, I'm looking at people doing the same thing the same way, or they're looking at people who've stolen other people's ideas and claim them as their own. And those people are gaining the courage to step forward and say, no, that's my work. You know, no, that's my work. And the internet, I tell people like, it is a game changer. 
for and it can you can use it for evil you can get or you can use it for good so I want y'all to be loud and proud about the value that you bring. I'm so glad you came today. I don't know where these other people um, are, but it's so funny how people say, I'm going to be there. And I'm like, okay, if you show up, cool. If you don't, cool. Okay, so much love. And I appreciate both of you. And uh, I'll probably see you next week. If not, <laughs> I'll see you on Clubhouse. <laughs> but have a fabulous day. All right, bye-bye. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Pleasure.